Okay, this is Life on Earth with Larissa. I am Larissa. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be talking about staying sexually abstinent until marriage. So stay tuned. This is a continuation from my previous video, so make sure you uh, check out the previous videos uh, regarding uh, maintaining sexual abstinence until, until marriage. All right, who should initiate the sex talk? If you're a youth, um, a child, um, then your parent is the one that's supposed to initiate the sex talk. Um, that's who's supposed to initiate the sex talk, the parent. The parent should not wait until their teenager is of a certain age, whatever that is, and then start to get curious and ask you questions. Um, uh, a lot of times that does not happen. Um, uh, so the parents should initiate the sex talk with their child. Um, in the previous video, I let it be known that it should be done as early as possible. You must also remember that there are, um, teenagers, teenagers and young people's bodies are constantly changing and, um, and they might feel a little timid and, uh, they might not feel confident saying I'm having feelings in my sexual areas. I mean, in my sexual organs. I'm having um, feelings down there and help me understand what this is, you know, or, you know, when uh, I definitely young ladies, their bodies change and and you have to explain their uh, reproductive system to them. OK. And uh, for the young men, they want to know uh, why things are happening with their uh, sexual organs as well. OK, so. They might feel a little timid and uncomfortable, you know, coming to you, just talking about it. If you're the guardian of that person. Um, and so it's very important for, uh, the parent or the guardian to, um, uh, to initiate the, the talk, sex talk and, um, and prayerfully the parent or guardian is, is, um, is going to uh, let them know their expectations and um, prayerfully those ex expectations are in line with the Bible, which is uh, sexual abstinence until, until marriage. Okay. Encouraging abstinence takes time. Encouraging abstinence takes time. So you can initiate the sex talk, but you don't want it to be just one time that you talk to that young person. You want it to be uh, continual conversations. I mean, you don't have to have the talk every night, but it shouldn't be a, uh, don't you remember I set you down when you were uh, 12 years old and we talked about sex and you can only remember one time you talk to a young person about sex um, their entire teenage life. That's, that's not good. Even two times, that's not good. That's not good at all. Why? Because they have to deal with sexual temptations. They have to deal with sexual desires. They have to deal with the media. Um, you know, they have to deal with maybe peer pressure from their friends. They have to deal with that 365 days of a year. So imagine you only talking to them twice about it, thinking, okay, my young person really understands this or they get it now. So do we really need to keep having this conversation? It's important that you do or that you spell to them uh, what God's moral law is in regards to uh, sexual purity. And that is abstinence, sexual abstinence, maintaining that until until marriage. Okay. So, um, it takes more than one conversation. Okay. So I'm saying a lot of things from a parent child, uh, perspective, but this is also applicable, um, to, uh, adults who might be dealing with, uh, uh, sexual temptations or who might just want to, uh, maintain their sexual, um, abstinence until marriage. Okay. Um, it's important for you to explain that 
having sex, having sex is not just a physical activity that people participate in. Um, sex was created by God to be a wonderful experience to be shared between a husband and a wife, um, a man and a woman. He created it. Um, it's a euphoric experience that they are supposed to experience um, together. Um, uh, so uh, sex is not supposed to be observed individually. It is supposed to be um, um, participated in. I mean, there's supposed to be two people um, participating in, in it. So you should not be uh, uh, doing sex on yourself. Uh, you should not be having sex with yourself in any way, shape, or form. And God did not create us to have sex with our own self. Um, so just want to put that out there. It is, it's not just a physical activity. It's something that is, it creates oneness. So it really is a covenant, um, a covenant between two people. And it's a time where those two people who, um, who are in love and who want to take their love to another level, who decide, let's get married. And then after you get married, then you participate in, um, in, um, becoming one and the way that, uh, the way that the couples become one, the, the man and the woman become one is by, um, the, uh, sexual, sexual activity or the sexual, sexual intercourse It's called sexual intercourse. That's how they become, become one. Okay. And I have here listed first Corinthians six sixteen. Did you know that fornication is participating in sex outside of marriage? So if you participate in, uh, any form of sex and you're not married, that is considered fornication in the Bible. Ephesians chapter five, verse three says, don't let fornication be named among you. Don't let fornication be named among you. And this is talking about God's people, uh, fornication. That means sex outside of marriage should not even be mentioned or named among God's holy people. Okay. Hebrews chapter 13, verse four says, but fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. So, um, it's definitely outside of the will of God, outside of the law of God to, um, participate in any form of sex outside of marriage covenant. Okay. Oh, well, some people say, well, as long as we love each other, then we should be able to have sex. Well, the answer to that is no. And God does not condone any form of sexual activity outside of marriage. So just because you love each other, it does not give you a license to participate in sexual activity. So you want to maintain your sexual abstinence until marriage. And, um, the Bible says, if you're not able to maintain and control your own body and, and self, if you're not able to maintain, you got these physical and fleshly desires and, and, and you've met your future mate, or you believe it's your future mate. And, and Hey, you all are really desiring each other and you really want to become one. Um, then the Bible says that you all should marry. It's better for you to marry than to to burn with, um, to burn with that passion and not be able to fulfill it. Um, and, uh, along that same line is I want to mention the difference between love and lust. Okay. So, so I'll put up on the screen what love is. Lust is an intense desire or very strong sexual desire. That's what lust is. It's an intense desire or a very strong sexual desire. It's very important for you to know the difference between uh, what love is and what lust is. Love is patient. Love is kind. It's not rude. It, it keeps no record of wrongs. It, forget, it hopes all things, believes all things, endures all things. Uh, love never fails. So um, it's important for you to know the difference between the two. Well, in the Bible, the Song of Solomon uh, chapter two, verse seven says, 
Do not awaken love before it's time. This means, um, some people call it foreplay. You don't want to start uh, dabbing with your sexual organs, um, getting them aroused, um, getting each other aroused, uh, masturbating, those kind of things. You don't want to do that before it's time. Those are the kind of things that are you, you feel euphoric and should be shared, um, euphoric and should be shared uh, with your lifelong uh, partner that uh, God gives you. You don't want to awaken. You don't want to awaken love before it's time because our bodies are created to start to prepare itself um, for intercourse. Um, so if you start doing things with arousal and your sexual organs, then it can, it can make you, uh, your body will start to prepare itself to have sexual intercourse. And this means you'll start seeing bodily fluids that come out, um, that, um, that enhances the, uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, intercourse that that takes place it will enhance that and our bodies are created to give into that and not not have to stifle it if it happens if that makes sense thank you for joining me i know uh this this uh this particular video went uh, very fast but um if you have any questions let me know uh thanks again for joining me and i'll see you next time Thank you.